morning and welcome back. So, uh, what I'm doing today is an oil change on the Dodge Ram. Now, the oil has been changed on the Dodge Ram, but I'm not 100% convinced it's the correct oil that's been changed on the Dodge Ram. Uh, so, I've been out and bought some oil and a new filter and thought, well, if I change it myself, you know it's correct, yeah? Um, so, let me show you what I've got. We have some Mopar oil, look at that, and a filter. Yeah, so we have here um, seven quarts, yeah? So we don't really use quarts here in the UK. It's more like we use litres. I think we used to use quarts, but now we use litres. Um, so I think that's like 6.6 .6 litres or something, yeah? No idea. All I know is that everybody told me that this uh, 5.7 litre Hemi, they all say this engine takes... Uh, seven quarts of oil. Well, I'm hoping that's correct. Google says that as well. Um, there's not many people I can ask around here because nobody has any idea. Yeah. Um, so we'll find out. Yeah. Someone told me that some of these take ten liters or ten quarts. I don't. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. But anyway, the most people told me, from what Google said and other Dodge Ram people, it should take seven quarts. Yeah, so let's uh, hope they're right. So while the engine's warming up, the oil filter is nice and easy. Yeah, it's just there. All right. So I can't ask for any easier than that. Um, now the weather here is cold, very cold. It's nasty, it's miserable, it's not very nice. But we're gonna do this job anyway, yeah? So. Uh, I've got the tools ready. Like I say, once the engine's warmed up, I'm going to turn it off. Then we're going to uh, whip the oil out and change the filter and put the new oil in. So I'm not putting the seven quarts straight in. We'll just put like six bottles in and then I'll check the dipstick here. Um, just in case somebody's got something slightly wrong or a slight miscalculation. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's get to it. So let's crack on. There's my oil drain pan thing. Um, got the sockets, oil ready. So like I say, it's nice and warm under here. This is to be the longest dipstick I've ever seen in my life. Look, it's like, <laughs> I need a ladder really to take it out. So the oil, like I say, is pretty new in it, but I'll be honest with you, like I say, when you buy vehicles like this, you never, um, people have a habit of just putting any old oil in it. So like my Jaguar and a few other cars have had, these cars actually do tell you what oil they require. So let me just show you, because I can't reach without the ladder. Uh, <coughs> so look, SAE 5W20. So like you've seen, it has had an oil change, but if it's had the correct oil put in it, I'd be very surprised. A lot of these places I've noticed seem to have like two or three, you know, the, the, the most common ones. And uh, if yours isn't one of the common ones, you get whatever's closest, yeah? I'm not saying that's what's happened, but you don't know. So I always think, every time I buy a car, change your oil and filter and put the correct one in, and you, you're much better. Oil is very important in your car, yeah? And having the correct one in, I believe, is just as important. If it was manufactured to run on that one, yeah? And they tell you to put that specific one in, put the specific one in, they tell you, yeah? You can't go wrong then. All right, so let's get to it. So the sump plug you can see is very accessible, yeah? Um, I haven't even got to jack this vehicle up, right? <laughs> so um, this is 13 millimeter. Now, what I'm gonna do is I've already just undone it. It wasn't that tight, all right? I'm gonna try and prop the phone up and I'm gonna try and hold this as close to here as possible because normally I do have a reputation for spilling more of this on the drive than in the pan, yeah? So, bear with me. All right, here we go. So this is what I normally do. Hold this here like this. Right, well now I'm the wrong way really, but this I should have gone the other way on, but it doesn't matter, bear with me. Hang on. There we go. 
There we go. Nice, yeah. Oh, we're nearly empty now. There we go. Lovely. And I didn't make a mess for a change. I must admit, that's not very often. I do. <laughs> it's not very often, I'll tell you now. So it's just an odd drip now. I'll put that um, plug back in in a moment. But I'm just going to take the oil filter off. Now, this is on tight. Too tight, in my opinion. Um, so I've got one of these tools. Yes, like a chain around. Alright. And we'll see if it comes off. So this is actually another job I usually make a mess with. So I've put the pan under it as best I can, yeah? So, uh, yeah, give me a minute. Now I'm gonna tell you, that is one of the tightest oil filters I've ever had on a car in my life. And you'll see how much pressure I've put on it. I wanna get it off, but I can't really video this because I'm trying not to make a mess. And, oh no, here we go, we're getting a mess, there we go. Now we're not getting a mess now, it's all right. We're still, yeah. Oh. There we go. Not bad, we didn't make too much of a mess with that. A little bit, but not bad, not bad. There we go, it's off. So this oil filter is actually auto extra. Yeah, you can see the pressure I had to get on that to get it off. That was one of the tightest oil filters, sorry, that someone, look, you see it's been on there a while because it's rusted on that edge. But that was ridiculously tight. It's made, assembled in the USA. Now, I don't know if that's a good quality one or not, I don't know. But whoever that hasn't been, I don't believe when someone changed the oil, they changed that filter. That filter has definitely been on here a long time. So let's hope the Mopar filter fits. Mopar, yeah, made in the USA. Good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fill this oil filter up with oil and then put it on. Now, I don't understand if you're meant to do that or you're not meant to do that. Some people say you do, some people say you don't. But I mean, if you've got an oil filter, it's bolted on your engine sort of this way. The time you screw it on, all the oil's poured out. But this one, it sits upwards, so you can fill it up with the oil and it won't, you won't lose it all. So, I'm only gonna fill it up three quarters of the way. I'm not gonna go all the way to the top. Um, but yeah, let me just fill that up now with the Mopar Max Pro. So, there we go. Um, now, what you are meant to do is see this little rubber ring. Look, you're supposed to rub a bit of oil all on this little rubber ring. Now, this is something everybody's dad, uncle, or anyone like that shows them to do that. Yeah? Literally, I think it was my dad who showed me that one. Um, but yeah, so let me just uh, screw that on. Right, I think we're recording, so you have to bear with me on this, people, because this is a bit awkward. I don't want to spill it. Oh. Look at that. There we go. Perfect. Now, as far as I'm aware, oh, hang on, I've knocked something over there. No, we're all right. I knocked the bottle of oil over, but luckily we've left the lid on. Now, I thought you were only supposed to do as tight as you can get it with your hand. Ah. Mopar. Like that. And that's it. I didn't think you were supposed to... I mean, I have seen people, some, I've seen some, um, people get like a wrench now and sort of like really try and get it on. No, that's it. 
I can't turn it anymore. Just wipe it with cloth. Mopar. There we go. There we go. It's awesome. So now I'm going to pour six of those. Well, I've put half in the oil filter, but we're going to pour six of those bottles in. And then the last bottle, I'll check it. I'll pour half in maybe and then check it on the, on the stick. But yeah, let's go. Don't panic. I'm not going to show you all seven bottles being poured in here because we may, may take a little while. <laughs> yeah. Like that. So at the minute, we're halfway up the word safe. Yeah. In England, we just have uh, like just a mark that says fill. Look, it says safe there. So, yes, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll put half that quart in and then have a look. Because obviously, I haven't filled the oil filter up 100%. But yeah, it's looking like seven quarts. That is dead on seven quarts. Yeah, and it's full. It's just slightly over the full mark because obviously, I didn't fill the filter fully. So. The time it goes round, it should work out where it's full perfectly. I am going to clean all this. Look, the more I'm looking at it, the worse it is. I will clean all this in the spring. Um, so it's not really the weather yet. So an another quick thing before I fire it up, and this is a bit of information. This is the battery that is on the Dodge, right? Now, I'm no expert at electrical things, right? I found out what this wire is, by the way. It's for the lights on the roof. But this is the battery I've got, right? Now... Is that big enough? Because I don't think it is. I don't think that battery is big enough for this, yeah? But uh, let me know in the comments, I'd be interested to know. It just seems very sluggish when it's cold. Now, when I bought this truck, the battery was ruined on it, and it only had a small battery on then. And uh, I said to them, I'll have a new battery on, and they put me this on, but I still think this is like um, too small. But there you go. But let me know anyway what you think. So let's fire up the ram, yeah? Right, here we go. Awesome. So that's done, I've just checked underneath. There's no leaks or anything around the sump plug. Always check, you know, always do check. You never know, do you? Um, but I've checked the sump plug, checked the oil filter, no leaks at all, perfect. So that job on this is fairly easy to prepare. It's quite a quick job. It's easier than the Ford Ranger actually, because the Ford Ranger is like at the side at the back and it's a bit of a, a bit of a pain. So I've just got to uh, clean up now. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, for some of you that live in America that probably have never been here or, you know, don't know, I'll show you the, the, the size of my dad's pickup truck, which is a Mitsubishi L200, which here is classed as sort of like a, a quite a decent sized vehicle yeah so let me uh show you what how big the, the dodge ram is compared to the mitsubishi l200 right prepare yourself yeah now i don't know if you have mitsubishi l200 in america or I, I don't know but this is a sort this is your sort of average size pickup truck here in the uk yeah and then you look at the size of the dodge ram <laughs> yeah so you can see a bit of a difference there. Yeah? Uh, the Ford Ranger is about the same size as the Mitsubishi L200. Now, if you buy a Toyota Hilux, the newer one, it's sl it's the, it's a bit bigger than one of these, only slightly, but it is still not this big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. So that's it for this video. Um, I've had enough today. Now it's absolutely frozen out here. Nasty. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next video.